Hey, we have another integral on the board from the MIT Integration B 2017. Problem number 16. A couple interesting things here. Whenever I see e to the x squared, this makes me think of the Gaussian integral. But the problem is we need this alone, and we get this other stuff that looks pretty complicated in the numerator. So I think what I want to do is deal with this and see if I can somehow simplify this and then get back to this. Now we have a useful formula for angle sum of sine that just tells us for sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus sine b cos a. So what we'll do is we'll kind of just label this will be our a and this will be our b and we'll just apply that formula. But we won't, we're not worried about the square. We're just going to break up a sine and then we can square it afterwards. So doing this, we'll just kind of follow our form here. So for x plus, sine of x plus pi over 4, we'll have sine x cosine of our b is pi over 4, then sine of pi over 4 cosine x. And this is going to work out nice because each of these values here is just square root of 2 over 2. So we can actually write this whole thing as square root, we'll pull the, we'll factor out the square root of 2 over 2, and then we can write this as sine x plus cos x. But like I mentioned before, we don't want to forget about our square. So let's kind of pencil it in now. So if that's squared, this is squared, then this is squared. So let's just square this out. This piece is going to be, squaring this is going to be a half. And then in the parentheses, we're going to have sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x. And this is actually pretty nice because we know that this is just 1. And we also can rewrite this piece here as sine of 2x using double angle formula. Okay, and I think that's enough simplification. So let's take this now and we'll bring this back into our integral and plug it in here. Now I've rewritten the integral. I just pulled the half that we had on this and put it out front of the integral because we don't need that right now. And then for the next step, what I want to do is, and I'll, you also notice that I brought our e to the x squared into the numerator. Like I said before, because this is what looks like the Gaussian integral, and I want to set that up. But before I do that, let's distribute this and break this into two integrals. So for the first integral, we just notice that this piece here is in exactly the same form. It's identical to our Gaussian integral. So from this formula, we know what this is. This piece is going to be square root of pi. So just let's not forget our halves. This is going to be square root of pi over 2. Now let's deal with our second integral. And this one, when I first looked at it, it was a little intimidating because, yes, we have our Gaussian integral formula. We have our e to the minus x squared there. But what do we do with this sign? And then also with no like x term up front, I don't see any way to do a u substitution or anything like that in this case. So in this type of situation, what you want to look for is you look at the bounds, and then we want to see if there's some easy way that we can, a lot of times these end up being zero or one or something. So let's see if there's a way that we can just kind of easily simplify this whole thing. And what I want to look at is odd and even functions. And now the good thing to know is sine of 2x is odd. Sine is always odd, if, unless it's squared or something, but just sine to the one power is going to be an odd function. But then this piece here is going to be an even function. Now, typically, an exponential is not even or odd, but in this case, because it's squared, you'll notice whatever, if we put a negative value in for x, it doesn't matter, it's going to be the same as the positive value. And it turns out the product of an odd and an even is going to be odd. And you could, again, verify that by putting in a negative value and seeing you get back the negative of the full expression. But because this is odd, and our bounds are actually the same, they're um, not the same, but they're the negative of the, of the top bound, we can use this formula here. When f of x is odd and our boundary is we just when it's symmetrical, then we just know the whole integral is going to be 0. So we'll use that here. This whole thing is going to be 0. 0 times half is 0. And so we're left with just the first piece is our answer, the square root of pi over 2. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.